In this video, I want to derive some equations that you can use to solve constant acceleration problems. Before, we found the three functions in time for constant acceleration. These functions are valid for all time. But when often when I solve problems, I'm not really interested in, in what's going on for all time. I want to know what's happening at two specific points in time. And so I want to use these expressions to derive other relationships that relate the acceleration of velocity and position at two specific points in time. I'll call my first time some initial time, t with a subscript i, and some final time, t with a subscript f. Another parameter that I'm often interested in is the time interval, which is t final minus t initial. I'm going to go kind of slowly so we keep the notation very clear of, of what we're doing. Next, the initial position is the position function evaluated at the initial time. The final position, which is x subscript f, is defined to be the position function evaluated at the final time. My initial velocity is the velocity function evaluated at the initial time. And the final velocity, oh, and this is, oh, we're on the x-axis, so I'll give it a subscript x, telling us we're on the x-axis. And so the final velocity, then, is the velocity function evaluated at the final time. Okay, so we can also then calculate the position difference, which is the final position minus the initial position, and the velocity difference is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity. And then, of course, the initial acceleration is just a, and the final acceleration is just a, because that's the one assumption we're using through all of this, is that the acceleration is constant. These are how I define my terms at these two points in time, and now I want to create relationships between them that I can use to solve problems. So my initial velocity is equal to the velocity function evaluated at, at the initial time. That's my velocity at time is equal to zero plus a times the initial time, right? My initial time doesn't have to be zero. It's just the earlier of the two points in time that I'm interested in. My final velocity is going to be the velocity at t is equal to zero plus a times the final time. And now I can calculate this difference. And so delta v, which is this minus this, the initial velocities are going to cancel. And so I'm just going to get a t final minus a time initial, which I can pull out the a, I get t final minus t initial, which is delta t. Okay, so there's my first relationship. If I put in the, the actual final and initial velocities for that, I get the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus a delta t. You can see where a lot of the confusion is coming from, because this expression right here looks a whole lot similar to that. But they're not. Those are, in, in fact, books might even write them the same way. But they're not the same thing. This is a function for all time. This is a relationship between two, two specific velocities evaluated at two specific points in time. Hey, this is an independent variable here, t. This is a time interval, the difference between these two points in time. They're not the same thing at all. You want to keep that in mind. OK, so let's continue. So now we have delta v. Let's calculate delta x. The initial position is the position function evaluated at the initial time. And that is the position at time is equal to 0 plus the velocity at t equals 0 times the initial time plus 1 half the acceleration times the initial time squared. And the final position is the position at t is equal to 0 plus the velocity at t equals 0 times the final time, plus 1 half times the acceleration times the final time squared. Okay, so I've just used this expression to plug in those times to get the initial and final position. 
Sometimes you just have to do the algebra. And so we're gonna, I'm going to walk you through that here. So I'm going to take the difference between these two. So delta x is the final minus x initial. So I'm going to subtract the initial from, from all of these. And so I get delta x is equal to, well, x0 minus x0, that cancels. So this is the velocity at t is equal to 0 times t final minus the velocity at t, at t is equal to 0 times t initial plus 1 half a t f squared minus 1 half a t i squared. But the problem is I may not know what this is. If I have my initial and final times or something other than 0, I, I don't want to mess with this. I'd like to find this in terms of my initial and final velocity. So I can do that using this expression right here. And so I note that velocity at t is equal to 0 is equal to my velocity at my initial time, t sub i, minus a t sub i. And now I'm going to substitute that into here. This velocity at t is equal to 0, pull that out, I get t final minus t initial plus this other stuff. And so now I can substitute in this expression and I get my initial velocity minus my acceleration times my initial time times this final time minus initial time. And now I have these two terms I'm going to bring down. Multiply this, this out, I get my initial velocity times time interval, final minus t initial minus, now this is the other terms, a t initial times t final, that's these two terms, and now plus a t initial squared. So what can I do with this? So this right here is just v, my initial velocity times my time interval, delta t. And now I have, here's a negative 1 half a t i squared. And here's just a a t i squared. And so I add those together, I'll get a positive 1 half t i squared. So if I bring that here, I get plus 1 half a t i squared minus a t initial t final plus one half a t final squared. If I plot off a one half a, this gives me t i squared minus, now it's got to be two t i t final, right? So I, I, this, this interior one I multiply by two over two. So then when I pull out a one half a from all three terms, there's still this two in the numerator there, then plus t final squared. And this, aha, right there is ti minus tf quantity squared. My position difference is equal to my initial velocity times my time interval plus one half times the acceleration times the time interval squared. And so we get the final position is equal to the initial position plus my initial velocity times the time interval plus one half the acceleration times the time interval squared. Yay! It took some work, but we got there. But again, you see the confusion. This right here looks a whole lot like this here. And again, some books just write them the same way. If you assume that your initial time is zero, and you just let t equal t final, <laughs> you can write this exactly like this, with the exactly the same symbols. And you have two different equations written exactly the same way. And so that can be enormously confusing. Just remember, this, these equations right here are true and valid for all time, where these expressions, this one right here, and this one right here are true for two specific points in time, which is what we usually want when we're solving sort of uh, kinematics problems. And as long as you're still not comfortable with it, it, is, it still seems confusing, make sure that you always keep the notation very explicit instead of trying to simplify it right away. Once you get very comfortable, you can simplify your notation so you don't have to write as much. But until you get to that, and that, that's what sort of books are assuming, right? they're experts, but until you 
get that comfortable. Make sure you keep everything as explicit as possible so that when you look at this expression, you can identify what these terms mean. And as long as you can look at those symbols and extract the meaning of the words from them, you're going to be much further on in being able to apply these relationships successfully. I've summarized where we are. Now there isn't any new information to add. However, we can use these two equations to derive two others that can be useful in certain situations. The first question to, to ask is, what if you don't have nor care about time? So let's first of all, let's solve then this one for that time interval and then substitute it into that one. Delta t then is equal to the uh, final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the acceleration. So now I'm going to substitute that into this one, delta x. I'm going to bring the x initial on the other side, and that gives me delta x again. So vx initial times delta t, which is vx final minus vx initial divided by a, plus 1 half a t squared, so that's vxf minus vx initial squared over a squared. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of that expression by 2. I can do that. Uh, it looks like 1 factor of a cancels here. And so this 2 is in the denominator here. Let me, let me move that down here. I'm going to move this inside here. So it looks like I've got a 2a on the denominator in both expressions, so I can uh, bring that to the other side. And so I'll get 2a delta x on this side of my equation, and I'm going to just multiply all of this out. My first term gives me 2vx initial vx final minus 2vx initial squared. And so now I'm going to multiply this thing out, and I get plus vx final squared minus 2 vx final vx initial plus vx initial squared. Okay, gosh, this seems uh, mighty confusing, but look, all this stuff cancels. Here's 2, that term just subtracts that, and I get 0. And here, here's minus 2 vx initial squared, and here's plus 1. That just turns into the sort of minus one of them. So this is just equal to vx final squared minus vx initial squared. Or another way to write that, vx final squared is equal to vx initial squared plus 2a times the position interval. Well, that's really handy. Let's go ahead and, and put that up here, add that to my, my other expressions. It doesn't add new information, it's just an equation that might be handy if I don't have the time interval because I have a, an expression that relates the, the two positions with the two velocities. So let's ask a new question. What if you don't have nor care about the acceleration? This doesn't really happen that often because usually you, you know the acceleration. But let's do that anyway. We can solve that first equation for the acceleration. So the acceleration is the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time interval. And we can substitute that into the expression for the position interval. This is now equal to the initial velocity times the time interval plus one half the acceleration, which is now final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by delta time times the time interval squared. This looks like a factor of the time interval squared. So I get uh, the initial velocity times the time interval plus one half will multiply this. The final velocity times the time interval minus one half the initial velocity times the time interval. Here the initial velocity times time, here's one half the initial velocity times the time, and so I can simplify that. This gives me plus a half. So now if I expand that out, maybe I'm interested. My final position is equal to my initial position plus 
one half, I'm going to factor out the one half in the delta time, final plus my initial velocity times the time interval. So now I have an expression that connects the position intervals and the uh, velocity differences that does not include the acceleration. Here we have four really handy relationships that connect the positions and velocities at two specific points in time under the assumption that your acceleration is constant. There's only two pieces of information here, getting these two expressions. However, if you don't know anything about time, this might be a place to start, and if you don't know anything about acceleration, that may be a place to start. 